Now, I know it's taken me about a week to cover this topic, but it's not about who's the fastest or who's the first. It's just about getting it done. Even if it took me about a year to cut, well, it wouldn't take me over a year. But the point is, it doesn't matter if I'm first or not to cover a story. It's just that I covered it and I get all the details all correct in the story together. Because this is one of the stories where I was leaning all the way to one side one day. And then like a couple days later, a whole article drops and then the whole tide shifted. It's a fucking whole new parallel universe where everyone that was on that side is now on the other side. It was the whole script got flipped. But yes, today we're talking about the Bayonetta 3 drama, the whole story that unfolded over the past week all the drama that's been included we're gonna go over all of it right now so last week the voice actor for bayonetta posted three videos on her twitter that talked about the entire situation that was going on with bayonetta 3 and how she wasn't reprised for her role and how she was insulted with a very low offer hello my name is helena taylor and i am the voice of bayonetta and i would like to explain to you why i didn't voice bayonetta 3 the Bayonetta franchise made an approximated $450 million. That's not including merchandise. So I just want to stop real quick right there at that one exact point. $450 million for Bayonetta. I'm sorry, but that's straight cap. That is, that is not facts at all. That is completely wrong. I don't know in what universe she's living in to pull that number out of her ass. $450 million for Bayonetta is extremely unlikely. Bayonetta as a franchise has sold over millions of copies. Yes, but not hundreds of millions of copies. Now, if there are somehow numbers out there that back up her claim of $450 million, I would love to see them. But I'm telling you right now, with a 99.9% .9 confidence, it's not true. It's not real at all. Bayonetta Bayonetta as an entire franchise has not made that much money at all. So out of curiosity, following the numbers she provided, $450 million worth of sales. I was like, all right, let me plug this in the calculator and just see what I got. So if we were to take $450 million divided by $60 per copy, that would be 7,500,000 copies. I don't know about you, but that's, I don't think Bayonetta as a whole has sold that many copies, at least not yet. Maybe when Bayonetta 3 comes out, there's going to be people foaming at the mouth to buy that many, but I, I just don't see it. And then to add on top of that, you got to remember, I divide that by 60. That's as if every single copy of Bayonetta that was sold was for $60, which we all know that is not true. It has launched on Steam and has launched on PS4. You can go look right now in the stores and you'll see the game is not going for $60 at all. And then on top of that, Bayonetta 2 only came out for the Wii U and the Switch. So really not a lot of people have access to it. And again, while Bayonetta is a known franchise, it's not Grand Theft Auto. It's not Call of Duty. FIFA is not raking in money like that. It's not even close. Because if the franchise really did pull those numbers, I'm sure that she would have popped them out, shown it to everyone to see, to back up those claims, but she hasn't. The theory that people are running with is that she's using Smash Bros. as like a leverage saying, oh, well, Bayonetta's and Smash Bros. So accumulate all those sales with the sales of the original games themselves, and then boom, you got 450 millions. I don't know why she thinks that would work, but hey, I mean, more power to try and push your narrative, right? As an actor, I trained for a total of seven and a half years. Three years at the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art, Lambda, with voice coach Barbara Barkery, and four and a half years with the legendary Larry Moss in Los Angeles. And what did they think this was worth? What did they offer to pay me? The final offer to do the whole game as a buyout, a flat rate, was 4000 US dollars. This is an insult to me. The amount of time that I took to work on my talent and everything that I have given to this game and to the fans. I am asking the fans to boycott this game and instead spend the money that you would have spent on this game donating it to charity. I didn't want the world. I didn't ask for too much. I was just asking for a decent, dignified living wage. What they did was legal, but it was immoral. So essentially it boiled down to her for a pay issue. She was not getting paid enough. She believed that for all of the experience that she has had up to this point, 
the fact that she was an iconic role, uh, what she brought to the table, that she was being lowballed, and the offer was so insulting to her that even though she believed that it was in their legal right to do it, that it was very insulting to her as an actor. And if what she said is true, then I agree. $4,000 is pretty low. And so pretty much the other three videos that she made just kind of reiterates her point that she said earlier. I'm going to play certain parts that I think just stood out to me that I, I kind of want to touch on briefly. And then we're going to get into the article that just broke everything and just flipped everything upside down. Then I urge you to boycott this game. I decided to do it to stand up in solidarity with people all over the world who do not get paid properly for their talents. Fat cats cream off the top and leave us the rotten crumbs. You know, in England right now, there are nurses going to food banks to feed their children. This is not right. This is not acceptable. It impacts mental health. Because of it, I suffered from depression and anxiety. I worried that I was going to be on the streets. That terrified me so much that once I was suicidal. I am not afraid of the non-disclosure agreement. I can't even afford to run a car. What are they going to do? Take my clothes? Good luck to them. Platinum had the cheek to say that I was busy, that they couldn't make it work with Miss Taylor's schedule. Well, I had nothing but time. They now have a new girl voicing her over. And I love actors. I wish her all the joy in the world. I wish her all the jobs, but she has no right to say she is the voice of Bayonetta. I created that voice. She has no right to sign merchandise as Bayonetta any more than I have the right to sign as Eva Green, even though I was her parrot on the video game, The Golden Compass. That portrayal is hers and hers alone. Now for her first point, I do agree with it. There are a lot of roles, a lot of jobs where people get fucked over. They get paid shit wages. They don't get any benefits. They don't really have job security. It happens all the time. And I even see it when I do editing gigs. It's unfortunate, but that's the reality of it. When she says she has no money to her name and she can't start her car and you know, she's about to be on the streets. I get that. I feel bad for that and you know I, I mean best of luck to her but on the other hand there's plenty of people out in this world that are always in that same situation you know what they do they get a job they get two jobs they do whatever they need to do she was the voice of Bayonetta I am sure she would have no problem getting other voice acting gigs if she really needed it on top of that she's part of a union obviously a union doesn't help 100% but they do at least guarantee you a rate oh I, if I recall correctly it's a thousand dollars for four hours granted it's not amazing but I can tell you that's a hell of a lot better than what a lot of people get and then you, when you look at the work that she's done over the past year since she's done Bayonetta it's not really a lot Bayonetta 2016 for Super Smash Bros Anarchy Reigns 2013 Bayonetta all she's really played was Bayonetta and then she had a couple one-off roles in an anime here and then an OVA here and then just the Bayonetta movie that's literally all she's done to me this comes off as someone who was sitting on their ass just waiting for the next Bayonetta to be announced and that she was hoping to make all her money from there and then survive off that for the coming months to years. I, that is so delusional to me and that makes no sense. If you're not working, you're not taking in gigs, what do you, th you think money's just going to fly out the sky and show up in your pocket? To me, this entire situation comes off as someone who wants to be set for life voicing Bayonetta and only Bayonetta and having enough money coming so she never has to do anything else and be happy with that. Which, hey, more power to you. If that's what you want, that's cool. But you got to be realistic as well too you cannot just rely on just one form of income that's why people voice act other games when you look at her replacement jennifer hale just from video games alone 135 all these games she's voiced so many fucking games dog and that's not even including the tv shows or movies that she's been a part of as well too and because i didn't see this earlier let me just show you this real quick this is everything that helena taylor has uh, dubbed or been a voice actor for and throughout her entire career that's it I can't make this shit up, man. On one hand, I get it. Voice actors get paid like shit. It happens for a lot of other people and it sucks. But the reality of it is you got to keep working. You got to get more voice acting gigs or whatever job you might be doing. The shit that she was talking about earlier where she doesn't have enough money. That shit's going to happen if you don't work. You don't do anything. While we all would love to live in a paradise where everyone gets paid correct wages and correct funds and we get a lot of money and we don't have to work as much. While that would be nice, unfortunately, that reality is not true. So this was the article that flipped everything upside down and kind of made people start going backwards and rethinking everything over instead of believing just one side without hearing the other. So this was an article posted on Blue by Jason Schreier. If, out of all the game journalists you see online and those who post information or articles, he tends to be the most reliable track record and has been solid on every single thing that he's reported on. As far as I can recall, there hasn't been a single time yet where one of his articles have been debunked or proven false and that he's been completely wrong. 
No, he has a pretty squeaky clean track record. So for someone like him to make an article like this, that's putting a lot on the line. And so there's a lot of merit to be held true to this. So it said Platinum Games sought to hire Taylor for at least five sessions, each paying $3,000 to $4,000 for four hours. And the studio said the people who asked not to be identified because they aren't authorized to discuss private contract negotiations. That would make the total for the game at least $15,000. In response, they said Taylor asked for a six-figure sum as well as residuals on the game. Platinum declined and followed lengthy negotiations, took auditions for a new actor. Platinum later later offered Taylor a cameo in the game for the fee of one session, which she turned down, the people said. And then the statement from Jennifer Hale, she said, with regards to Bayonetta 3, as a longtime member of the voice acting community, I support every actor's right to be paid well and have advocated consistently for this for years. Anyone who knows me or have followed my career will know that I have great respect for my peers and that I am an advocate for all members of the community. I am under an NDA and am not liberty to speak regarding the situation. My reputation speaks for itself. I sincerely ask that everyone keep in mind that this game has been created by an entire team of hardworking, dedicated people people and I hope that everyone will keep an open mind about what they have created. Finally, I hope that everyone involved may resolve their differences in an amicable and a respectful way with love and respect to you all, Jennifer Hale. And then after everything broke, Platinum Games made a statement saying we at Platinum Games offer our sincerest appreciation to everyone who has contributed to creating the Bayonetta series over the years, as well as the community that has served as its foundation. We give our full support to Jennifer Hale as the new Bayonetta and align with everything in her statement. We ask people to please refrain from any further comments that would disrespect Jennifer or any of the other contributors to the series. And so for a while, this is where everything ended. The story was done closed hands story was wrapped up for a hot minute helena didn't make any more statements she didn't make any posts she didn't talk about anything and to the surprise of me and just about everybody else she made a new statement now deep down if you still had any hope you might be hoping that i say oh well she made a statement and it just proves that everybody else is wrong uh no she just kind of doubled down and said you know what you might think i'm lying but i'm not they're trying to move you from the big picture <laughs> oh this story never ends so about 10 hours ago, she made a whole Twitter thread that just went for fucking ages, but we're gonna go through it real quick. So she starts off by saying, it's come to my attention that some people are calling me a liar and a gold digger. I feel the need to defend myself and a reputation in the industry, see thread. As I posted on part three of the video thread, I explained that their first offer was too low, that offer was $10,000 total. Remember, this is a $450 million franchise, which she still hasn't proved how or where her numbers are even coming from. It's just her talking out her ass. They then sent me an insulting offer. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to write to Hideki Kamiya. I'm going to write to him and ask him for what I'm worth. So I got a friend who uh, has been in business in Japan to write in Japanese to him. I know he read it because I got a reply. I got a reply saying that he values greatly my contribution to the game and that the fans really want me to voice it over and he the memory of first meeting me as bayonetta is a memory i hold dear so i thought great thank god that was when they offered me four thousand us dollars so here's where the wall starts to crumble even more and i don't understand why people do this and double down when things can clearly be fact checked they can be seen and she says as i posted on part three of my video thread i explained that their first offer was too low that offer was ten thousand dollars in total you didn't even say ten thousand dollars in total you just said it was too low and that you got offered four thousand dollars pretty much her way of trying to set the narrative without letting on too much because then people would have a little bit more and be like oh ten thousand dollars of course people say that's still too low and i agree with that but you're trying to spin a narrative without giving the full picture to the entire story that's already a red flag to me but let's keep on going and so then she said after she talked with Hideki she was offered an extra five thousand dollars and then she declined to voice the game so she would have had in total fifteen thousand dollars but she said nope that's too low I don't want it she said so I declined to voice the game I then heard nothing from them for 11 months then they offered me a flat fee to voice some lines for four thousand dollars which I, I'll be honest if it's just for a few lines that's that's better than nothing but hey I'm not a voice actor so I don't know maybe it's shitty she said any other lies such as four thousand dollars for five sessions or total fabrications when the way that she words everything is set up and says oh i was only offered four thousand dollars she leaves it open for interpretation on purpose so that's what people can assume and then she goes oh no 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 y'all are wrong that's not what i was saying all because the article got posted and it pretty much debunked all her claims and that since the game has come out in 2011 that she's been a big push for bayonetta and that without her that this shit wouldn't even be worth that today which i mean to be honest is up for you to decide i really couldn't tell you but hey that's what she says I will post the 14 charity so you can donate to a charity instead of buying this game from corrupt greedy people there are people who are attempting to throw shade and discredit what i say the industry is powerful they have powerful journalists too 
They're trying to save their asset. Don't fall for it. Now, as we come to the conclusion of the story, I'm not surprised by the outcome. When I was talking about everything before we even got to the article, it kind of gave some red flags, kind of like alert, alert, alert. Something's not really adding up here, but you know what? We'll keep paying attention. But now as the picture started to become clear, it's become very obvious that Helena Taylor was not 100% truthful in what she said and that she was, you know, offered for what it's worth a decent offer. Now, while $15,000 isn't exactly what she was hoping for and that she wanted a lot more money, I understand that voice actors don't get paid that well. I think for all that is worth, that's not a bad deal. If it's five sessions for four hours a pop, you do five times four, you got 20 hours of work for $15,000. That's a lot more money than a lot of people make an entire year. So on the realistic side of things, that's a pretty fucking good offer for all that is worth. And then when you take into account that the only character that she has ever really voiced is Bayonetta alongside a couple anime characters throughout her entire career. I mean, that's pretty good. All you've ever voiced is Bayonetta and you're going to make 15K for that for five sessions, four hours a pop, 20 hours total, not even a full 40 hour work week. I'm just saying that's pretty good. I'm not saying that voice actors shouldn't be paid more. I'm just saying that for her status and for all that she's done really in her voice acting career, that's a pretty good deal if I'm being completely honest. But hey, this is my thoughts. Hopefully with the way this entire story has unfolded, people now start to be a little bit more reluctant and they start to say, you know what? I'm going to wait until I see both sides of the story and not just say, all right, they're right and call the day and start saying, you know, let's start boycotting. Woo! We're going to go after them. We're going to show the big corporations a lesson. Yes, I hate them too. I think big corporations suck. But at the same time, it's not right to just listen to one side of the story and not hear the other. It's best to hear both sides first and then make a logical judgment from there. Anyways, if you made this far into the video, consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Have a great day. Yeah.